All right. Good morning, True Art Believers. This is your host, uh, Pearson. Um, so, uh, I've been working on this Jim Morrison drawing for quite a while. Um, I would work on it more and actually uh, broadcast it more, but uh, I have some art shows coming up next year, and I need to focus on my bigger work. So I don't have the, unfortunately, I don't have the luxury to do these type of drawings because they're not going to be in the show. So all my t most of my time is being invested towards my bigger work. Uh, but I'm going to try to show uh, these pieces as I'm working on outs like casually throughout the week. Um, at least once every Saturday, I, I hope. Fingers crossed, right? Um, so I've been struggling with this piece mainly because I have when I do drawings, I have trouble with drawings quite often for uh, certain reasons. Uh, one of the reasons typically has to do with the fact that... Um, um, I get these photos that are high contrast, so you have black and white, and uh, I draw, um, the way that I draw and the way that I see things is through a lot of re visual relationships. So when you have high contrast and black and white, oftentimes you can't, you, you can't see uh, uh, where things begin and where things end a little bit. Like, you can tell where the, the value of the object ends. Like if I'm doing a purely value drawing, yeah, but I also work on lot with line. And if I can't see where uh, a certain strong contour ends, then I can't draw a line to describe that object. So uh, right now I flip the drawing upside down so that I can kind of look at it in a different uh, sense, um, different point of view. And that way uh, we'll see what happens. <coughs> this helps me sometimes look at the still life or look at the object a little bit differently and it will help me draw it a little bit closer to what I'm seeing because I'm not looking at it as a portrait anymore. I'm looking at it as purely abstract uh, uh, dark and light contrast or dark and light value. Uh, and here, it's a little bit different. So I've changed it up a bit. This is gonna make me uh, think a little bit different and open up my possibilities, or at least I hope to. So I'm not going to be a, a, I got my coffee right here. Check this out. Woo! I got to keep the coffee away from me because I have a tendency to spill coffee on things that I'm working on. So, oh yeah. So what I'm going to be doing is, um, uh, you're not going to see me or not going to see me working as much as I should. I'm going to be backing, um, backing up uh, out of the, the picture plane to kind of see the uh, these forms uh, farther away and then walk closer and start do a, make a few decisions and then walk back and make a uh, work again um, and then see what happens uh, so already just looking at it upside down I see some forms that I normally I I think I, I had close but I wasn't really getting all the way So let's see here. And um, the thing about this photo is the nose, where it's on the on the opposite side, where it's extreme contrast, you can't see where the nose begins and ends. All you can see is just no, uh, the nostril and and skin and uh, high contrast skin tone. There's not even skin tone; just white. And that's one of the problems I have. So I'm gonna put my timer on for 30 minutes because I only do 30 minute bouts. I find that working for 20, uh, 30 minutes at a time <coughs> is helpful for me because I uh, have a very busy schedule and um, it allows me to, uh, it's enough time to get uh, some work done uh, and uh, allows me to uh, not feel so bad if I have to stop or um, it's, if it was a la an hour, you know, I have to stop a couple times because there might be certain things that uh, I have to attend to at the moment. So I'm standing very far back here, about arm's length. 
And um, just look in here, and I can kind of tell that I've I give I've given too much room in this area of, of white space here, so I need to trim it up a little bit. Now I'm not defining the value per se at the moment. I'm just I'm just trimming down the value area, and right around here I need to give some more uh, uh, gray tone. <sighs> All right. Aha. So what I like to do is I type to I like to use my hand as like a chamois and uh blur out areas and uh, and so forth. I'm hoping that um, I'm hoping within like the last three hours I'll be able to work on this with more uh, charcoal pencil. Uh, I think I'm getting to the point where everything's getting I, I'm getting my uh, my image kind of locked in finally. It took a lot longer than I expected. I had, I had hoped to have it uh, uh, locked in earlier so I actually start earlier, uh, but I was struggling a bit. So um, I had to deal with that. I haven't drawn upside down in a while, so I'm a little rusty. Very rusty, to be honest with you. Very, very rusty. So I like to blur that out. Uh, and then go back in it uh, and subtly define things. Um, there's many reasons why I do that, but uh, the main reason is I don't want to hold parts of the drawing too precious that I can't, I, I, in a sense that uh, uh, if I make it everything too precious, and this is where, uh, um, I make everything too precious that I'm not willing to make any changes that I need deem necessary. Uh, this is where photos suck. Man, uh, when you have things that are extreme, really, really, really dark, right? And you're trying to define those objects and make it feel like you've looked at it in real life. Uh, you're only basing it off value. You really can't see, like the hair, like all this, all my, my stock image is just nothing but dark value. But like, okay. Well, where does the eyebrow begin? Well, you can't, like, well, what about the, the one that you see in person right next that's in light? Well, you can't always assume that the eyebrow is going to, uh, a person's eyebrow is going to be symmetrical with the other eyebrow. That's not always the case. So we have that to deal with, man. So I'm having all these little problems that I didn't expect to happen. Like, I can kind of see the, the beginning of the chin you know? So I gotta think, I gotta figure out how much uh, uh, I wanna show on the areas that are very dark contrast, dark, very dark contrast, you know. And I've been struggling with that, and that's why this drawing's been taking a little bit longer than I expected. I also think that I didn't make the nose long enough. I think it made a little squat. I have problems. Uh, um, if you don't, if I don't have a lot of uh, outside information, I tend to have a hard time making things proportional. Um, so I get like with the faces. Uh, usually, you want to use. I, I like to use some of the information on the ears or something that's outside of the uh, uh, composition that, or outside of the picture frame that shows uh, how that ear looks like. There's certain things I'm thinking about.
And another thing is uh, when you're drawing, uh, doing these drawings, um, whoa, I just noticed this, that I've made this cast shadow. This shadow needs to be a lot larger. Like uh, if I'm looking at this shape and this, it's got to be as big as the chin. So it's the shadow is going lower and then the, uh, the secondary shadow is going even farther than I gave credit. So I got to put that down. So I would have no I, I would have no I might have noticed that um, if I were kept drawing, but I think um, and I'm not I'm not giving this this whole side its credit. It needs to be darker here. There we go. Things are starting to form out a little bit. Um, another thing as I want to do is to really I think I want to nail down. Uh, yeah, we're gonna, we might even go farther out. So that uh, the shadow on the underneath the neck is a little wider because I'm not giving that shadow enough oomph. Um, I like charcoal uh, because you can do these large drawings, um, and they take you can do these larger drawings uh, in quicker fashion than like graphite. Graphite are really good. Is really good like in eight by ten, or at least that's what I assume. I, I don't know. I don't do large scale graphic drawing, graphite drawings because it's not as forgiving as charcoal. And I like the forgiveness of charcoal. I like the uh, the ability that I can use my hands and smudge things out. So it feels more like sculpture instead of uh, drawing, which is appealing to me. And I've been really struggling with his eyes. Um, mainly because I want to show the eyes as they, I see them, but also I want to the, define them a little bit more. Um, so I've been, tr tr I've been struggling with like the scale uh, of his iris, you know, how big I make it. And so I've been going back and forth and if I go back and forth on one I gotta go I gotta enlarge the other one just like I just did now so I gotta enlarge this make more room so I can make it a little bit larger um, and so forth um, the reason why I'm struggling is because in this photo particularly it's it, the, the eyes are a really strong component because he's really staring at the at the at the viewer and you don't want it to be like oh this let's this ignore those eyes no you want them you want them to look like the eyes but still be gestural so that's my tr problem is like how can i suggest these eyes and still define them but not have to like render them in the fashion that uh people expect them to be rendered so like very suggestive very loose with the form and able to show the form uh the uh, the eyes without actually having to really render them to its fullest capacity. And so I need to probably make the eye big again. These. Yeah, very, to be honest with you, like this, it's, these eyes, you can see them it, it, here. They look pretty good, like, uh, realistic, but to be honest with you from far from in, in person, it's super, it's, there's not a lot being shown there. Uh, just a few like manipulations of tone. Just a few manipulations of tone here and there. I, I, it's actually quite blurry. It's like a John Singer Sargent drawing or watercolor. You know, I don't really um, define much here. I leave a lot to the viewer to guess. Um, it might be because I'm not that good, or maybe because I'm purposely doing it. I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm a I'm a, a, a Closet genius, and I don't know. <laughs> That'd be great. Poet didn't even know it, type of thing. Some people don't like drawing upside down, and I don't mind it. It's a good exercise. 
and, and, and like focusing you to see things. Um, but some people just don't fancy it. I think, I think you should do, uh, I think you should probably, if you're an artist and you draw, if you draw stuff, I think you should probably try to do it for at least one session of your drawing, you know, at least one. So to kind of train your eye, to constantly keep your eyes sharp, you know, and like, well, well, Pearson, um, my eyes, my eyes already sharp. Like, well, that may be, but you know what? It never hurts to constantly uh, try out new things. You're not. It's not gonna. It's not gonna destroy you. It's gonna. It's gonna make you better. So, I'm also deciding on like how much information I should show uh, below, like uh, the neck and the torso. I don't think I'm gonna show much. Uh, I think the next session. I think I'm gonna do one more session upside down. One more hour session. Uh, so two thirties upside down. But the next session I'm gonna start using pencil. And then I'm gonna flip it right side up, and then that way I'll have, um, that way I'll, uh, I'll change my perspective again, and, and stuff that I wasn't seeing, I might see again. Um, I just needed a break from looking at it uh, uh, the, the way that, I was, that I've been looking at it, and uh, you know, sometimes you need that. And what, what was really interesting is that actually with this piece, with this piece, particular piece, I actually started using and started it using the Riley head uh, construction. So I think I'm gonna start doing that more often. I'd like to practice that. And I think um, the best way to do it is to do serious drawings with it and then um, get better at it as opposed to like doing it in studies, right? Uh, I think studies are good uh, if you have free time available. But, um, you know, we all live hectic lives and sometimes it's hard to, uh, to really uh, focus on doing studies and such. I wish I could. You know, I really wish I had the, the, uh, 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 the time capital. Like, I wish I had the ability to spend that time on just studying how to draw these things. Um, I, I found a, a video of this person saying, like, if you want to learn how to do certain things, like art-wise, Make it into a project. So, like, sometimes if you're like, you want to learn how to do graphic uh, digital art, make like your own, uh, uh, start doing artwork, but not just like practicing on digital work, but like maybe make a comic that's all d done digitally so that you, uh, you, you come out with something in the end. Instead of just like studies, you come out with a, fi a finished product and you've learned something in the end. So, uh, the same thing goes with this. Like, Instead of coming out getting studies done and having something in your sketchbook, I have a finished product and I've actually learned something in the process. So I've learned a little bit about the Riley head construction. I learned a little bit and it helped me get the, 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 the it helped me map out my drawing a little bit quicker. So I think I want to do that more often. Um, and it's just going to, just going to make, make me better. That's all, it's, that's all it's going to do is just make me a better artist. And, um, I think uh, really good artists don't just get to a level and say, hey, you know what, I can do photorealism, I'm done. Although some do. Uh, uh, I think if you're a good artist, you'd be like, I can do photorealism, but I am super uncomfortable with at like just throwing paint on a, on a canvas. That feels weird. That is so weird. You should, that's probably what you should be doing. He's like, I feel uncomfortable doing that. Uh, then you should be throwing paint on canvases. Um, I was like, oh, I feel super uncomfortable uh, taking my photorealistic painting and then throwing paint on it. Oh yeah, this is gonna, I think this is starting to form out. I'm liking it. I can see things that I was missing. I was really struggling here. Uh, I don't know if that's right. Maybe it is. So I've been struggling with the, uh, uh, the contour lines of his chin. Um, so like the angles, I've been, I'm constantly addressing the angles of his chin. And, you know, I've been trying to get it more and more like 
him because it's 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 he's got a strong jawline, right? But it's not super strong, and uh, it's it's not it's it's still smooth and curved. But you don't want to make it if you make it too strong, then he looks like a Cro-Magnon, like just like just just like. He's had way too much steroids, you know? If you make it too soft, then it doesn't look like the person. So you're trying to get a perfect bit blend. I'm trying to get the I'm trying to get the angle right and just enough of the curve form, but still being kind of a gestural with the work, like still being very uh, fluid with the line. And I've been going back and forth and it has been driving me bananas. Bananas, B-A-N-A-N-N-N. The shit is bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-N. -A -N -A -N. So, what I might have problems with is... Let's see here. Actually, it seems... Huh. Seems I'm right. His his one of his cheekbones on one side has a, a a sharper angle than the other side. Like the other one's a little not as sharp. So that's because people don't have symmetrical faces, and so that's what's been probably been throwing me off. I kept seeing. I was like, that feels so weird. You know. But it's probably I still I'm, it's still sharper than I'm probably rendering it, and I still need to trim it down some. Uh, but it's not as sharp as uh, the one side. One side has a he has one side of his chin that's really sharp in appearance. And yeah, I'm I'm getting close to my 30 minute mark. I have like 11 minutes left, but that's good. This is good. I've made some progress. I'm starting to see some things uh, that I didn't see, and I'm gonna work on it for another hour upside down. Yeah, I noticed that. I didn't notice that before. Yeah. So what I didn't notice is the uh, the negative space uh, right here that it actually intersects 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 it intersects sect. It intersects between uh, right on the iris or right closer to the eye that I'm. I wasn't really giving it credit. Which means I gotta make this sharper. So I've been making the forehead. I've been showing more and more of the forehead than I than I uh, was giving credit. Oh yeah, I need to show a lot more forehead. Yeah, I've learned a lot. I need to move a lot of things around up here now because things need to be shifted down and to the right a little bit. Um, so there's that that I need to deal with. And it's just going to make it more like what I'm seeing. Um, and that's another thing that's really good about charcoal is you, if you had pencil, you wouldn't be able to like, you can't do this with pencil. You can't go, you can't blur out things. You couldn't take a chamois and shammy things out, it just wouldn't work.
I think it's working. I think I'm starting to get some, uh, I'm starting to see some things that I didn't see before. It's looking good. I, I'm, I'm liking, I think I'm, I'm starting to see things and that's, things are starting to click or at least more than they were yesterday. And it might've been, uh, I was drawing last night and it was, it was like, although I was getting, I was getting closer, I just wasn't getting close enough. And sometimes it has to do with, uh, it being the morning and, and nighttime, you know, um, obviously after you, you fatigue, you get tired and people don't think, know this, but drawings, a lot of thinking and an exorbitant amount of looking, you got to look and, uh, People are like, oh, well, you can just draw. It's all. It, they think it's all by the hand. No, it's you're you're looking and concentrating. It is a lot of concentrating. You know, so observing things really is quite is is kind can, can be fatiguing. You know, it can be very tiring to observe things for extended periods of time. And uh, try to render or model those forms. You know, oftentimes when I'm teaching. I look at everyone's students, every student's work, and I'll give comments, and I'll be observing all their work. And at the end of class period, I'm like, I'm exhausted because I've been thinking about their work the whole time. And I try to go home, and, and I, when I get home and I try to draw, I can't. It's like ah, uh, because I don't, I can't, I'm not seeing things because I've spent all my my uh, my mental energy on on their work that I don't, I don't have any. Uh, I don't have the mental reserves to really concentrate on rendering things uh, because it takes some um, some thought. And sometimes I'm like, ah, I don't want to think. Just don't want to think today. Don't want to think today. Just want to sit down and veg. Dun, 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 dun. Never want to think. Don't want to think. Can't just draw and be easy. You don't have to think at all. Can't just draw and be fun. That's another thing about charcoals. Uh, you can really, really, really do a lot. It's really forgiving. I might even need to give more room, to be honest with you. I'm thinking, oh yeah, I'm thinking I might need to go up even more because I don't, I don't think I'm giving enough room on the, on the, on the. What's happening is I think I didn't give enough room uh, on the top area, and I compressed the eyes, and now if I move everything down uh, on the eye, uh, the hair, the show the more the the, the forehead, I'll have much more room. I can uh, uh, expand the eye area a little bit more, and then I'll be in a better uh, position. Yeah, I can already see that that's going to help. The only problem is when you when you make all these mistakes and all these try to correct all these errors, you get these these after shadows, and they can be kind of a pain um, to work with. Uh, thankfully, though, the way I that the drawing like this, I learned it through a, a professor of mine. It, I, he didn't tell me this, but like I learned that this way, uh, if you have mistakes and it shows, it's not a bad thing because it makes it more interesting as a drawing. So that's what's kind of nice about this drawing method is, is like it kind of frees you from the restraints of having these huge mistakes uh, because. Yeah, that's one thing that uh, makes drawing kind of not fun sometimes because the fear that you're going to make a mistake. With this like technique or strategy, you don't have to worry so much about making mistakes because it uh, it's geared towards that type of uh, 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 like execution. Yeah. It's starting to feel like more like uh, uh, the guy, although I probably 
need to move the chin back down because I kept, I trimmed it down. I probably need to move the chin back out again and still keep the angle. I've been going back and forth on this chin forever. And that's, that's kind of a, that's kind of sucky. Um, but it is what it is. Yeah, I needed more room on the eye, uh, above the eye, and I did not, I didn't want to give that area up. So I got to pull all the stuff down. That's what I got to do. So I mean to show more room up here, maybe to get that curve show a line here for that hair. Uh, who knows? Um, we'll see. I got another, I'm gonna be doing this for another hour. Uh, not now, but like afterwards. So it's almost over, so I'm uh, just, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I gotta wait, I gotta go do something else soon. Maybe I'll focus, uh, I'll focus on the chin here, or maybe I'll focus on the top. Maybe the first 30 minutes I'll focus on the top, and the next 30 minutes I'll focus on the bottom. And then I'll flip it around and work on it the, the remainder that way. So I got one minute left on my 30 minute marker. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do now. I'm just gonna, we're just gonna throw some stuff out there. I don't have anything, that, oh wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. Probably could stand to lower. Uh, that's probably about right, probably a little lower the hair. Probably could stand to be a little lower. And this whole area right here, whatever that is, I can't tell if that's like a shoulder or something. That's one of the problems of these things. You don't you don't know where things are at. You don't know like what are you looking at? Like is this part of the neck? Or is that the trapezius? Is that part of the deltoid? Everything's so darn uh, uh, like light, high contrast. You know, you're making up stuff right around here. Where does the neck start here? I don't want to make, I want to show the neck of this person, but I can't see the neck in the photo. It's just a dark black uh, void right here. You know, where does the eye begin? Like the, the actual eye, it's just a dark black void here. Barely here, it's the same thing. I'm having the same problem. And that's the problems with photos and no one wants to talk about that. They just see the out, out, uh, the final product, and they think, "Oh, that looks like like a photo." Like, yeah, because the person copied the photo. But you know what? That person doesn't know where the person, that guy's neck is, or that eye. That's one of the flaws of it all. Anyways, thank you for stopping by. Really appreciate it. Share, like, etc. I'm gonna have to get out of here for today. For today, enjoy your Saturday, etc., etc., etc. Follow me on Matt Pearson Art. Art, uh, follow me on Instagram at Matt Pearson Art, Twitter at Matt Pearson Art, Facebook at Matt Pearson Art. 
Um, and my website is www.mattpearsonart.com, where uh, eventually you can buy prints of this stuff. Thank you. Bye.